continuing this tutorial series on how to make a movable window with UMG very easily. Uh, just to review, we've got several important classes. We have our fundamental window class, then we have the content, and then we have an actual usage of that content, which is has its parent as window content. Movable window is the only thing that we actually spawn, and we spawn it uh, when I press the Q key, I create a movable window, and then I initialize it, initialize it, telling it what I want its content to be and how big I want it to be. I don't think it needs to be 900 long. I think we could go with 700 quite handily, and maybe 300 here. All right. So this is in the actual main game code. This is all that you run right here. Uh, is really just these two things. The rest is all just support structure. Okay. So our goal is to make it so that when we click on it, it doesn't stay with us forever. My preferred way to handle that is to say key event left mouse, left mouse button, and I won't, I'm going to make it not consume the input because I really don't think they should do that by default. It should really be a choice on your part to consume the input. Here I want to get all widgets of class. This is a node that I contributed to the engine back in 4.5, and uh, I love using it and use it all the time. I want to find all windows, all movable windows, do a for each, and I want to cast a movable window, and I want to set dragging to false. So for any movable windows that I find, I'm going to set it to false. The reason I do this in the player controller is because if your mouse is outside of the bounds of the widget, it won't register the mouse up event. I still want it to. So click here, now it follows, but when I release it stops. So we're just about done. And look at this complex content here. This could be anything. I just picked a random example. Could be anything, right? But look! So we have most of it done. There's just one problem. It jumps to the origin, right, every time. So here's how you fix that. That's the final step, and then we're done. So go to UMG, movable window, and we, when we start drag, I don't want to just start drag. I also want to know what the offset for the cursor should be at the time that clicking started. So this is going to be cursor offset. Right, and then we're gonna set that here. Now I need to know get relative offsets for the body. Get body relative offsets because the body is not at the origin. The body is over here, right? So I need, and wherever you click within its space, once it's fully made, you need to get the right position. So this is gonna be. a pure function with the input. This is going to be the position to make relative. So position to make relative. The output is going to be the relative position. And now to do this we have to get the body once again. And we have to get it as a canvas slot. And we need to obtain the position. And then we need to subtract. We need to take our position. And we need to subtract the origin of the body position. And that's all we have to do to make it relative. Right? Now the final step is we have to once again obtain the, which in the first video you saw, it take me a while to realize that you have to include controller here. Uh, we have to actually pass in this position. So we're going to, I think I'm going to say make vector 2D here. It'll just be easier. All right, now I'm going to take the vector 2D and I'm going to make it relative using my own custom function here. And that is going to be our cursor offset. So to review, this is the cursor position at the time that you click to start dragging. That's where we're at. I will need to take that world position, or screen space position of the cursor, and make it relative to this box. So to make it relative, I subtract the origin from the world cursor position. That's it. 
and then I'm setting that as my cursor offset at the time of clicking and now I want to maintain that cursor offset here each tick every single moment that I'm updating the cursor position to the canvas all I need to do is take the cursor position and subtract my offsets so here I have my offsets and I want to get them and you know I wonder I think I think making the vector is really the fastest way to do this. So I'm going to make the vector here. Now I need to take my cursor world position. That's the offsets. So it needs to be cursor world position minus my offsets. Right? And then connect that and we're done. Let's go in game, see it work. Now press Q and look, it worked. No, it didn't. Why didn't it work? Something didn't click. Let's find out. I figured out what the bug was. Over in window content, I when I made start drag here, I set dragging directly instead of using start drag, right? To prevent that from happening in the future, if other people are using your project, what you can do is not expose. Oh, it's not exposed. Huh. I don't know how it got access, but the point is you need to use the actual function. If if our parent window is valid, start dragging. Now that function is now going to run correctly and set the offsets, which it wasn't doing. All right, so that was the one critical bug in my original video. Make sure you change it to use start drag which is this custom event in the original window setup. Now, with that done, everything will work. Press Q, look! So now, I have a fully functional movable window, which maintains its position properly. And that is all there is to it, and it can be any content you want. I can make a completely different setup, this is just random. Again, the way that the content is so easy to add is because I have this body canvas which is just this arbitrary thing when I first initialize the window I get its I give it its size from the initialization that's the window size then I create the inner content type the inner content has to be of a specific type of window content right which I can't really expand and that window content is the custom class that we made to support this whole system and then I'm setting the inner content that gets created this inner content I'm setting it to be auto size or size to fit and that's what makes it fill the whole window and that's it that's all there is to get the content in there to do the dragging feature well you just saw the other videos on that and I just to get the cursor offset was the last step all I had to do was get the cursor offset relative to the body widget, this thing. I just had to say, well, what's the relative offset, the relative position, by subtracting this origin point from the global position space. And that was all. And because I'm using scale by DPI, thanks to Nick Darnell, this will actually work with any screen resolution. And that's the whole process. So you need the movable window base, you need the content base class, and then you can use whatever content you want that is inheriting from window content. The way clicking starts again is by the image. The image has an on-click event that I'm using, which starts the drag, which is window content, and then window content start drag calls the parent window and calls its start drag, which is the actual inner type. That's the entire process to now be able to use a movable window with any type you want, or any content you want at all. Yay! It works! And it has a complex feature. Let's click on button 1000. There we go. Enjoy!